What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another free recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so since that's really how we find all these awesome recipe experiments. Now today I'm bringing you a recipe for a delicious keto ice cream that you do not have to thaw. That's right guys, this thing can come right out of your freezer, scoop it, eat it, no problem. Because there's nothing more frustrating to me than going to the grocery store, spending all sorts of money on various brands of keto ice cream, and then when I want to go eat it, I've got to put it on my counter for 20 to 30 minutes just to be able to eat the thing. That's no fun. So that is why this recipe was created. I hope you guys enjoy it, but with that, let's get right into the recipe. All right, everybody, welcome to this delicious recipe for our keto, no thawing required ice cream. And as you can see in front of me, there are just five simple ingredients going into this. So let's go ahead and get started. Now right here in this bowl, I have two and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. And for all my international viewers, that's about 600 milliliters. Then we have one quarter teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. I believe that all ice cream should have just a little bit of salt in it to really enhance the flavor. Next up, I have two tablespoons of my flavoring agent. Now, let me show you guys what I'm using and let me explain why. So I opted to use this flavoring from New Naturals. Now this stuff is actually designed to be put in your coffee. And uh, we got this in a keto box of all things. We were just kind of trying to see what we could use it for and I ended up making ice cream with it. And this comes in a ton of different flavors and it's really cheap. No, I'm not sponsored by them, but on my website in the written recipe that'll be in the description, you'll find a link to where you can buy this on Amazon or their website. They have a ton of different flavors and they come in packs of all size, even little sample packs, so you can make a ton of different flavors of ice creams if you want. Now the ingredients in here are pretty straightforward, a couple different gums, some stevia, some flavoring, and a little bit of glycerin. For those of you that are worried about glycerin, it has a glycemic index of three, so there's really nothing to be worried about. And as you guys noticed, I am using the salted caramel flavor, so this will be a salted caramel ice cream. But any of their flavors seem to work great, and that's what I love about this, is it's very simple to just swap out the flavoring as long as we're using the same product. Moving on, we have one third cup of allulose. For those of you guys who want more information on allulose, check out allulose.org. It is a zero glycemic index sweetener, and per their website, they do say that you can subtract it from your total carb count if you are on a low carb diet, which which is exactly how we're gonna treat it. Additionally, allulose has this property where it actually freezes very similar to real sugar, which is exactly what we're aiming for here. And lastly, I have 80 grams of ice. This is crushed ice, and we'll get to that in just a second. So let's go ahead and get everything tossed in this bowl real quick. Now while I'm stirring this, let me explain the ice. Now you can look online and check out the different water contents of different varieties of milk. But one of the things that's important to ice cream is you need a certain amount of water in there in order to A, let it freeze and become like a solid ice cream, but also you don't want too much to where it'll become icy. So a lot of recipes will use a mix of heavy whipping cream and milk or half and half because they all have different quantities of water in them or percentages of water. You want enough fat that the ice crystals stay small and there you get a smooth ice cream, but you need enough to where it freezes well. Now the best way that I found to do this without having to stick this in your freezer for a long time before churning it is just to use some crushed ice and let it chill the mixture and we're gonna water it down. Now I did do a bit of math to understand the exact ratio of ice to go into it. If you're curious how I got it, I just looked at the percentages, found out the weight or the uh, volume of heavy cream that I'm using and the ideal water ratio for ice cream. And then I figured out how much water I needed to add, weighed that and then weighed the ice. Easy enough. And I am using crushed ice because it melts faster. So this can go in the churning machine much faster. If you guys don't have a churning machine, I'll cover that a little bit later. So just go ahead and stir this till the ice melts. You don't have to stir it continuously, but just kind of come back every now and again and stir it until your ice is melted. As soon as it's melted, we're gonna go wanna go ahead and start churning it. So now that all of our ice is melted, and let me be clear here, you want all of the ice melted, otherwise you're gonna have some little crunchy ice bits in your ice cream, and that's probably not a good thing, unless you want some weird texture and don't feel like putting any other add-ins later on. I don't know, just make sure it's all melted. So I'm gonna be using an ice cream machine. The one I have here is from KitchenAid. Really don't necessarily recommend it because they are quite expensive and it's just an attachment for the blender, but you can get some cheap ones on Amazon. Um, there's also a few different techniques you can use. You can find on Google, like how to make ice cream without a machine. Some of them involve putting it in uh, mason jars in your freezer and coming back every so often and shaking it. There's a few techniques out there, but just for the sake of time, I went ahead and bought an ice cream machine. 
And when you really think about the cost and time savings involved with this, so the amount of money you spend on keto pints from the store, and uh, then you take into account the ingredients are a lot cheaper and you have control over everything going into them, I think that it's actually a pretty good payoff if you spent, you know, 30, 40 bucks on an ice cream machine, but that's just my personal opinion. No one can make that decision but you. In any case, I'm using the one here on the KitchenAid. All of my uh, ice is melted, so it's time to churn this ice cream. So just follow the instructions on your respective ice cream maker, get it in there, turn it on, and it's gonna take about 17 to 20 minutes to churn. If you're adding in any mix-ins, basically the last 30 seconds, just toss them in. For the salted caramel ice cream that I'm making here, I've actually added chopped pecans and some of Lily's white chocolate chips in the past. But for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna be doing that. So let's get this in the machine and get it churning. And I'll check back with you guys in 17 to 20 minutes when this is done. All right, everybody, I went ahead and got the KitchenAid out of here just so you could see a little bit better. This was churning for 20 minutes, and as you can see, it's got the consistency of a soft serve ice cream at this point. So now what I like to do is I like to transfer this to a piece of Tupperware that I'm going to put in my freezer. You can eat this right now and it'll taste like a soft serve. If you put it in the freezer for a couple of hours or you know, I've had mine in there for weeks and it stayed the same consistency, but it'll make it feel more like that kind of harder ice cream that you're used to prior to keto, kind of like the dryers you'd buy at the grocery store, that type of stuff. You can still easily scoop it, it has a great texture to it, and you don't have to let it sit out for 20 minutes. And this whole thing, including mixing the ingredients, churning it, takes less than 30. So I think that is a great option. So that I think the only thing left to do is for me to transfer this to some Tupperware, put the finished product on the screen right now, and then catch up with you all for the taste test. And just real quick, hopefully the lighting in here isn't so harsh that you can't see that, but that's what it looks like as it's about to go into the freezer. So now that you guys have seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. So I have right here a bowl, or I guess a scoop, of the keto ice cream that we just made. Now, fair warning, I did shoot that other recipe part like two days ago, so this has been in the freezer for two days. And let me just step over to the camera real quick and show you guys the texture. So now, let's give it a bite. This is the best keto ice cream I have ever made, guys. It is the perfect texture. I've made a couple versions in the past, one of them trying to up the fats in ice cream, one of them was just like a mason jar variety. Um, but this has the best texture. It's very smooth and creamy, and actually has a bit of like of a stretch to it, almost like if you've ever eaten at like Cold Stone Creameries, you know how their ice cream has that bit of like a stretchiness to it. I don't know how else to describe it, but this even has that. In terms of the flavor, we're getting that great flavor from those uh, New Naturals flavorings. Again, that came in like a keto crate, keto box, something like that. And we just found a really cool use for it. Plus, they're cheap. And even if you have to buy an ice cream maker, all the ingredients in this recipe are so cheap that in the long run, you'll save money versus paying seven, eight bucks a pint for whatever ice cream you choose. Now again, I did make a salted caramel flavor and the salted caramelness really does come through, which is one of the reasons I liked using those syrups. And they have a ton of different flavors on their website. So literally just swap it out for whatever flavor you want. It's that simple. So I'm really happy with this recipe. If you guys are looking for the full written recipe, it's gonna be down in the description box. You'll see a link there. The macros will be down there as well. But with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and close the video. So if you like this video, please leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that for me, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.